Welcome to those of you here in person and those of you joining us virtually. My name is Courtney Kaysen Mann. I'm an audiologist here at Presbyterian Ear Institute. This is the fourth session of our audiology series. Today we are going to be focusing on hearing loss, device use, and cognition. We're going to start by breaking down the parts of an audiogram. By understanding what hearing loss looks like, we'll have an easier time understanding why it impacts cognition. This is an audiogram. This is how audiologists plot hearing sensitivity. On the y-axis, or from top to bottom, we have hearing in decibels. For our purposes, we can understand decibels as volume. At the top are very soft sounds, and at the bottom are very loud sounds. Across the x-axis, we have frequency or pitch. On the left side, we have low pitches, and on the right side, we have high pitches. This highlighted section, or from 20 decibels and above, is the range for normal hearing sensitivity. The sections below 20 decibels are divided into different categories of hearing loss. Mild, moderate, moderately severe, severe, and profound. These sections give audiologists a way to describe the configuration of a person's hearing loss. This circled section is fondly referred to as the speech banana. The speech banana is the area where most sounds of average conversational speech occur. This helps us understand what parts of speech are impacted by various degrees and configurations of hearing loss. Vowels typically provide volume and consonants provide clarity. Next, we'll discuss these symbols. The circles, X's, triangles, and squares are symbols that are used to represent air conduction. Air conduction is how we hear with our ears attached to our heads. That sound has to travel through the ear canal, eardrum, bones, into the inner ear, and then we hear it. The greater than less than symbols and the brackets are used to represent bone conduction. That sound uses vibrations against the skull to travel straight to the inner ear. If an audiogram is displayed in color, the right ear is always documented in red ink and the left ear is always documented in blue ink. These two types of testing, air conduction and bone conduction, help audiologists determine the type of hearing loss that is taking place. Sensory neural hearing loss takes place at the level of the inner ear or the nerve. Conductive hearing loss takes place when the sound cannot get through the outer and middle ear. Mixed hearing loss is a combination of the two. Time for some practice looking at real audiograms. Here is example number one. From top to bottom, we have soft sounds to loud sounds. From left to right, we have low pitches to high pitches. Circles represent the right ear. X's represent the left ear. Let's look at the sections that this hearing loss falls in. This patient has what we call a normal sloping to severe hearing loss bilaterally. Bilaterally means that this hearing loss is symmetric in both ears. Now, let's look at the speech banana. This hearing loss creates a diagonal line through the speech banana. When this individual is not wearing their hearing aids, they do not have access to sounds that are underneath and above their thresholds or the softest sounds that they are able to hear. This is documented with the red oval. These speech sounds are quieter than this person's thresholds. The sounds that are below their hearing loss are audible, but very, very soft. This is documented with the green circle. This person has to work extremely hard to follow conversation without their hearing aids in. This is typically the patient who reports that everyone is mumbling or talking too fast for them to follow a conversation easily. There are also often complaints about hearing and background noise and hearing people when they walk away or are not facing them. Here is example number two. From top to bottom, we have soft sounds to loud sounds. From left to right, we have low pitches to high pitches. Circles represent the right ear. X's represent the left ear. Let's look at the sections that this hearing loss falls in. This patient has what we call a moderately severe sloping to profound hearing loss bilaterally. This hearing loss falls below the speech banana. When this person is not wearing their hearing aids, they do not have access to speech 
as all sounds fall above or in a softer region than this person can hear. They are relying heavily on visual cues to engage with their environment and are likely the person that is struggling with anxiety around being invited out to social engagements. Let's transition into how hearing loss and cognition interact. There are several correlations that have been found when looking at the interaction between hearing loss, device use, and cognition. As we established when we were looking at hearing loss and the speech banana, hearing loss makes the brain work a lot harder. If we're not hearing all speech sounds, we're working hard to fill in the gaps, typically by relying on visual cues like lip reading. If we're working to fill in the gaps, we're fatiguing our other thinking and memory systems. If our memory system is fatigued, we have difficulty transitioning information from short to long-term memory. Let's take this one step further. If we're working so hard to fill in the gaps, we often feel fatigued after social engagements. When we walk away feeling fatigued, we often feel less inclined to socialize. We then start to withdraw and become less socially engaged. When we become less socially engaged, we become less intellectually stimulated. Intellectual stimulation appears to be the biggest player in various research that has been published on the link between hearing loss and cognition. Decreased social engagement has become a focus for a lot of research related to healthy aging. Decreased social engagement has been shown to have an effect on isolation, anxiety, depression, and cognitive decline. Isolation and anxiety are strongly linked to our desire to go out. There can be thoughts such as, if I go out, will I be a burden on others? How many times can I ask for repetition before my family or friends are annoyed by my presence? These feelings lead to depression due to lack of social engagement with family and peers. We then start to see concerns for cognitive decline due to lack of intellectual stimulation. Now we know how hearing loss and cognitive decline are linked. How strong is the correlation between hearing loss and dementia? These two statistics are points that have been driven home in various ways in multiple papers. First, hearing loss is associated with a 7% higher risk of dementia. And second, hearing loss is associated with 8% of dementia cases. Again, these are correlational, not causational. However, if there is an easy intervention, would you not want to partake in that intervention? These are additional points that have been made. More significant hearing loss, meaning more severe than mild hearing loss, and longer lasting untreated hearing loss, lead to higher risks for cognitive decline. One of the most well-known statistics in the world of audiology is that it takes a person an average of seven years to seek out intervention for their hearing loss. That could be seven years that you're missing out on information and feeling fatigued in social settings. The strongest association between hearing loss and dementia is amongst those who do not use hearing aids. This is likely due to hearing loss leading to decline in intellectual stimulation and decreased social engagement. What happens if we regularly wear hearing aids? There are no cons of hearing aid use that have been published. We have seen reductions in depressive symptoms within three months of hearing aid use. Hearing aids have been proven to be a helpful tool in preventing dementia onset. We've seen improved balance or decreased risks for falls. Individuals have a greater environmental awareness. And we've seen higher activity levels and greater engagement with peers. This has also been shown to lead to higher levels of intellectual stimulation, bringing us full circle. If you're 65 years old and have not had a hearing test completed, please schedule a visit with your local audiologist to ensure that you have good hearing health and if your audiologist recommends hearing aids, we strongly recommend being fit with appropriately programmed devices. Thank you so much for joining us. Our next presentation will take place on December 6th. We look forward to seeing you then.